today we're going to be making a return to one of our favorite modders, uh, Scotland Tom. He's got four maps uploaded into the Steam Workshop and all four of them are very, very highly rated. So whatever this guy's doing, it must be right. I reviewed his map, Bold, Bold, um, uh, Boulder something, I'd say Boulder Rapids version 2 a few days ago and it was so good and I got a very good reply from Tom himself on the YouTube channel. I had to download one of his other maps, Powhatan Valley. Now, already from a screenshot, you can tell it's got a, it's got to have some good production value. It's got a nice, uh, nice picture for it. Whereas I think some of the others, but, but they're not bad. But yeah, you, know, you can tell Tom puts uh, goes the extra mile with making his maps. So I've been playing that today. If we just load it up, and I'll show you how I've gone. When I first downloaded the map, I was intending on just playing till I get to about 10,000 population, and I feel that that gives me enough time to, to to get a rough idea of how the map works. But I was having so much fun, I got carried away and ended up doing over double that. So, you start off in this area. Let's just have a quick zoom out. As you can see, it's, it's a valley, as the name suggests. There are steep mountains on the side. Let me just tilt the camera down. If can I, can I tell it down further? There you go. So as you can see, there are steep mountains on either side and a, neat, and a nice river running through it. Um, I did the usual starting out with a roundabout trick and it seems to have grown nicely. Now I've got most of my residential in this area, some commercial here in industry. When I started the game, ah, before I talk about which industry I chose, one of the things I love about this map is it forced me to change my normal electric electricity generation strategy. Normally I just go right ahead when I start a map, plump, uh, plump down one or two wind turbines and that's me sorted. Then later on I switch to advanced wind turbines. I couldn't do this this game. If we look... Can I bring up the wind map? Let me just see... Wind map, wind map. There you go. As you can see in this starting square there's very very little. Now, I don't know if he's done this on purpose, but there's essentially one hill where you can put a wind turbine on and you get 8 megawatts. Anything near here gets 4 or 5, so it's not really feasible. And for the first, I think the first time ever in City Skyline, I started off with nuclear, with um, coal power plants, so I did a 5. Now, as the game progressed, I was able to build these nice dams in the river and they generated enough electricity. I could get rid of a coal power plant, so that, that beast is doing 128 megawatts, and there's a third one up there. Not doing as much, but it's still nice. And even better, I managed to set these up without flooding my town, which is uh, which is a bit rare. But anyway, the second tile I bought was this one to the right. And I did for some part of it stick these wind turbines up here. As it's on the top of a hill, you, you were getting the full 8 megawatts. Now, you have this lovely road going up here. I always love when you get these mountain villages. Um, these mountains and maps that you can you can actually build roads up. In the map I reviewed a while ago, you could only build a single lane road. I think it was Rama's something, some Norwegian place. And it was a very very hilly map. Um, luckily, in this map by Tom, you can build a dual lane road, so there's not too much too much traffic there. Now I I know I haven't expanded here too much, but the whole map plays very very fun. It 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 forced me to adapt and play differently to how I normally would. Now when I started out I was a bit short on cash so what I did was this area has oil underneath it. Now there's only a bit of black left. It, there was a lot more when I started and this whole industry was oil. I, I replaced with offices to sort out traffic because traffic was, was getting a bit heavy on this road here. Now I might just stick in a train station. Well, that's the last one I did before I decided to stop and make this video. Uh, I, I thought with a map this crowded, I'd struggled to put in a railway station, but somehow, somehow I managed it. Now, this map, because it's so good looking, so varied, forced me to have a little bit of fun. And you've got this little secret road leading out here, winding through. It's, it's a little dirt dirt path, don't worry about buses, they'll, they'll be, <laughs> you'll explain why we're going this way soon. All the way through here, to my house. Ah, no. Alright, let me tilt the camera. There you go, that's my house. So I've got myself a park. Oops, there's an emergency in my house. This is it, my house there. I've got, uh, this is the shop where I go. This is my workplace. And I've even got myself a nice, a nice smiley face wood. There you go. And you've got a, a nice little path leading down to the river there. Um, 
if you wanted to stroll. So in most maps, I don't normally build build something as weird as this, but having this little windy valley kind of essentially forced me forced me to do it. And the reason there are so many buses going there is because there is literally a bus stop outside my house. Now, as well as that little road, I've built another one up here. It goes right way up here into what, what I'm going to call my little fishing village. It's just a collection of little houses, which if we use our... Oh, one's on fire. Um, come on, guys, get some water. Throw it on him. Okay, so if we use our imagination here, this, this is like a, a, a holiday home with some static caravans. People go here to escape the city. And I love how this map essentially... It, obviously it doesn't force you to do that, but it allows you to do it, and it doesn't ruin ruin the gameplay as such. So let's just have a quick zoom out. One thing that you'll notice is that there aren't many connections in into the whole map. There's essentially one. I can't turn this around. There's essentially one highway leading in, and there is a railway road down here. But what's really surprising is, despite there only being one highway leading in, my traffic is brilliant. Now, I, I do have some decent public services. I've got subways everywhere, a few bus stops, some obviously the train station. Um, the biggest the biggest reason I think this roundabout is empty is that the only bit of industry I have left over is this little bit of oil, which I will get rid of soon enough. So I don't have that many trucks coming in. However... I would have still thought there's a bunch of trucks coming into my commercial areas, but apparently not that many. So I've got the population 20,000. Monuments are a while away. It's not as difficult as the, the last map I reviewed, um, which the, the name escapes me. But it's it's very fun. It's very, very playable. It looks great. And if you look at all the little details... Now, I, I, I don't know if all of you here have actually opened up the map editor in city skyline but what you'll notice is that it's very difficult to be subtle there's some big brush tools you, you, you plonk stuff down you plonk hills down plonk water sources down and it's very easy to essentially flood areas and not have all these detailed mountains so you, you can tell Tom's put a lot of effort into this and now he's managed to make oh, I suppose yeah if you make a little depression input water source in that's great. So, from an expansion point of view, you've obviously got this big valley in the centre which you can build on. But I'd imagine what Tom wants people to do is have these little offshoots, tiny offshoots, with little villages at the end, whether whether they're practical or like these places, just purely aesthetic. Now, I did expand out and up because obviously I wanted a fishing village and I wanted I wanted to touch this river this river on the other side. If I was playing the game slightly more seriously what I'd do next is try and expand downwards so I touch that, that rail connection, that external rail connection down there and connect, see if I can get more tourists in essentially. Now I haven't actually unlocked boats so I don't know oh no there you go if you look right in the top right corner you can see the, the boats the, um, the incoming boat line so you can if you were to play this further, un unlock ferries, um, put a lot of. So you, you obviously have to put your your ports downstream, past your dams. So overall, it's another excellent map. Now I know Tom's only done four maps at the moment, so I've, I've done two. I'd, I'd love to review the other two, and I will. Eventually, I may hold back just a bit and review some other reviews maps, just just so I don't seem like I'm being biased towards uh, towards this guy. But he, he seems like he puts in the extra effort, makes brilliant maps, and let's just hope he carries on doing it. Thanks for watching.